Wow, so uh, this is my very small tile shop. I got a wet saw. That is a wet saw from Harbor Freight. Got it on sale for about $200, which was a worthwhile investment given the amount of tile that I was doing and the amount of money I was spending on it. So this is an update on the shower. So the red guard was done first. That does the waterproofing. And this is the tiling that I started yesterday. I started with the ledger boards on the bottom and then I made them all the way around a nice level line and I was using this little guy, this little laser level right here. This thing is awesome and I just happen to have, it comes with a magnetic, um, magnetic base on it and this just happens to be steel. So I could put it, here I'll show you there. I could put it anywhere I want, whatever height I want. And you can see how helpful it is to keep my lines straight, both horizontally as well as vertically. So today I'm going to keep going, but you can see I've started taking off these, these levelers. Now the levelers were needed because when I started on this side and I started working my way up, I got about three rows done and I noticed looking down at it that it wasn't even. Now I originally bought these levelers for the floor. It's a kit that I got on Amazon. And it comes with three things in it. There's three components to it. The first is this type of a, uh, these are spacers. They're a 16th of an inch thick this way. They sit behind the tile and then you put these wedges in. And then you use this tool to squeeze the wedges. You can put it on like this. And you squeeze the wedges together. Now I'm not gonna squeeze it because that one's already tight. But that's all you have to do. And then when you look down at the tile, it's a little hard to see, but I have a before and after picture that shows these things are much better the way they are now with the leveling system. And the, uh, the reason why I really need to do that with marble is because it doesn't have much of an edge on it. It has a very, very slight bevel, slight. So the tiles are exactly flat and you need to have them nice and even. So what the leveler does when you tighten on that, the, um, the wedge, it pulls both tiles flat and flush. And then the next day, you just pop them off with a mallet. Now, unfortunately, now I'm gonna have to pull some of these little pieces out. So the, obviously, these parts are disposable. You can't reuse those. But you can get extra bags of these spacers. But the, uh, the wedges certainly are reusable. So that's how it goes. And here you can see the finished look. And the tile is nice and even. See how smooth? Hope that shows up on camera. Well, that's what I'm working on. Tiling. Now is for a good time for me to recognize the guys that influenced me, the other YouTubers that uh, I learned my techniques from. I've already mentioned Star Tile. That is where I got the, the Red Guard approach and how to build the shower itself and the curb, etc. The tiling, I was heavily influenced by Sal de Blasi of Elite Tile. And Sal does a lot of time-lapse videos kind of like this that show how he works and what he does. And it was extremely helpful for me. In fact, he did one where he did the entire bathroom out of Carrera Marble and uh, the whole thing in time-lapse. And that's really what gave me the confidence to, to do this myself because it's, it's not easy. The tiling was the most time-consuming and the most expensive part of this job. So it's, um, 
it's very intimidating, I gotta say. So thanks to Sal and others that have uh, given me the confidence to do this. Because like I told you, this was the first time that, I mean, I had tiled before, but I never tiled with marble. And marble is a special beast. Here's a few pictures that just show my progress as I was going. Now I got to a point where I stopped using the levelers for the wall. And the reason for that is I actually got better. And that's going to sound funny, but you know, I always say that by the time I'm done, I'll be an expert because it was, heck, I was working on this for six weeks, just the tiling. But in reality, that is true. And I got better at the way that I was putting the thin set on the walls as well as back buttering the tiles. And so with consistent application of thin set, you have better results. And, and I got to a point where I really didn't need it anymore. The ceiling was an interesting one. I wasn't too keen on that, but again, Sal de Blasi had a, a video on how to do that. And sure enough, they did stick and it was awesome. This picture from behind the laser level shows how I got the ledger board on the right side totally lined up exactly where it needed to be with the tile that was already done inside the shower alone. There's no other way I would have been able to do that without that laser level. I tried to get a little bit smarter with my thin set and I was letting it harden in buckets and then I would try and bang it out and reuse the bucket. But um, what I found is <laughs> I was breaking buckets because <laughs> of course you start hammering a bucket and you know, the stuff just comes apart. So I tried something different this time. I tried to get a new bucket and these disposable um, liners, okay? And so I'm gonna see if I can get it out of here and maybe that will enable me to get the, the old thin set out without number one, damaging the bucket and number two, maybe I could just reuse the liner. Ah, I see the flaw. I must have punctured the liner with my trowel and of course water and thin set got through it so I am definitely not going to be able to reuse it but the good news is it came out clean and the bucket is fine and I could just put another liner inside the bucket We're ready to go Having done that wall behind the vanity and the toilet, I had to move my tile saw so that I could work on, on these two walls. And I kind of learned from my mistakes and improved. So I got one big sheet of plastic and I kind of made a tent around the whole thing. And I have that plastic coming down into that bucket down the bottom there. So all the water that drips off of it should go right into that bucket other than any that might just come incidental in the front here. But for the most part, I think that's going to be a, a major improvement. And over here to do this wall, I, I just, I really can't stress enough the awesomeness of this $37 laser level. It gives you a level line and a plumb line all in one with that crosshair right there. And what I do is I set it up so that I know where the top of that tile has to be. And I'm about to mix some thin set and get started on this wall. Two hours later. I promised to stop harping about the, the wonders of this laser level, but you can see the laser line is right here kissing the top of this tile. And this is in the shower. Now, I've been working on the two walls, that back wall and this one over here. And this is amazing. And it's just connected right here. Really? Somebody's got a car alarm? Anyway, it's on this magnetic, on this, uh, this metal here. So it's great because I could just slide it up and down to get it perfect. But anyway, it's over there and I can turn it right here and it stays level. 
and it's just kissing the top of that tile over there. And then turn it over here and look at that, kissing the top of that tile. That is just amazing. I don't know how else I would get it level all the way across the whole room. And you can see I had the, uh, the window trim installed so I could tile right up to it. And now I am going to start working on this wall here. And then I'll be done with all the wall tile. <laughs> here are a few pictures that show how I installed the corners on the half wall and tiled that niche. A lot of spacers, a lot of tape, <laughs> a lot of patience. Then I could put the floor tile down. That was a nice mosaic, the basket weave. That went down pretty easily, but when I went to grout it, you could see those little gray things. They tend to move. They didn't stick very well. So that was a bit of a pain in the neck, I must say. My next challenge was the bathroom floor. And to do that, I had to put my tile saw actually in the shower. So that was uh, pretty tricky too. I laid out all the tile and cut it ahead of time before I started gluing any of it down. So it went pretty quick. And that was a good thing because it was really pretty hard on my knees. And this is where the floor levelers came in great. This is what they were really intended for. They provide no lippage. They make sure that all the tops of the tiles are perfectly smooth. No need for a mallet here. Just use my sneakers. And here's a before and after. Now that I have the floor installed, I need to do these last two rows down the bottom. And you'll remember I used ledger boards here. And the benefit of that is that I could put the ledger board exactly level and then work my way up and the ledger board supports the weight of all that tile. Then I could do the, the uh, floor. And the reason why I didn't do the floor first and start from the bottom up is because I would risk damaging, you know, it's very soft. The, uh, the marble is very soft, so I didn't want to risk that um, damaging the floor while I work on the walls. So, much less risk. Plus, I'm not going to make as much of a mess with only two rows to do. So, to cut them at the bottom, this is a little, uh, a little bit of a, a trick here. If I were to put a full tile, and then another full tile, this is just a piece, but you can see it doesn't fit. So, it has to be cut, and I'm going to cut that line across the bottom. So, to figure it out, what I do is I took another another little piece like this and I just put three spacers on the bottom and taped it. And three spacers are for one, one here, one in the middle, and one at the top, if you think about that. And then I put it under each joint like that. I measure this distance here and I write it on a piece of tape, three and a half inches. And then I come over to my saw take my full piece of tile, I come over to the saw, the fence is already set at the distance that I need, you can see that there, and I am going to cut it. That's the side that goes down. The cut edge goes down against the floor. And that's how I'm doing the last two rows.
Next came the grouting. And if you've never grouted before, it's really not that hard. You just need a grout float, which is rubber, so it doesn't scratch the tiles. And you squeeze the grout into all the joints, usually working diagonally. And then you use the edge of it to screed it off, the edge of the float, that is. You get the majority of it off that way, and then you go back with a sponge and lightly get any grout off the face of the tiles. And like I said, other than the basket weave with those little gray dots that would move while I was trying to screed off the grout, um, it worked out really well. really wasn't a problem at all. This is actually a whisper gray grout that we're using here. It dries lighter than it looks in this video. And here is what it looks like when it's done. And this was my view from the bed. When I was done with the floor, I was exhausted. And finally, the pencils were installed with caulk that matches the color of the grout. That's all I put them in with was the caulk. Oh, this is sweet. Oof, it's a little bright though. There we go. How's that? Look at this room. Awesome, right? I just painted the ceiling and we are in the process of picking a color. So hopefully that decision will be made pretty soon. I got all the tile installed here. Got my little pencil, we call it a pencil on top, which is a bull nose to finish the edge of the tile. I did it up, up top too. And uh, we gotta seal the tile, and then we'll be done. Well, no, then I get to put in the, the toilet and the vanity, and we got the shower door guy coming on Monday, so should be a lot happening here. So <laughs> stay tuned. Visit my website, handydad.tv, for more great ideas and information. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when new videos are posted.